Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to have this conversation. I'm so happy to be here and excited to have this conversation too. Can we all just take a moment to admire this beauty? I'm so like, <laughs> I'm so thrilled to be able to share. I know we won't be able to share your whole story and your whole life journey and everything that's gotten you here, but we can share some of the really important parts. And I think the parts that will also inspire others to see what is possible for them mm -hmm. and how much can really shift in a relatively short period of time. Yes. Like a year, I would say in that, and even less in many ways. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was, okay. it was so, yeah, less probably. To give some context we work together one-on-one -on -one for a really short period of time. Was it a year and a half ago? Something like that. Yeah. About that. Yeah. And then you went off, you explored your things on your own. And then you came into the inner circle summer of 23. So last or September, so last July, I believe July 23. Mm -hmm. We just wrapped up sometime like January, early January. And when you came into the inner circle, I remember so clearly, like your big intention was to be in feminine flow. And you were, you know, on summer vacation and really taking the time to be in that practice. Do you want to start us off there maybe? Like what that was even like to set that time and intention for yourself coming into the inner circle? Yeah, so feminine flow became my theme. Yeah. I think I felt that I had the time and the space um, with being off for the summer. Mm -hmm. And I was newly separated. So I also had my kids only 50% of the time. So it really gave me that opportunity to, um, to just spend that time with myself. Yeah. And... And I fully <laughs> toked it all in. <laughs> um, yeah, just really trying to anchor into um, finding or who my authentic self was, um, what it was like to just do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to just really find that, yeah, feminine flow of just... Ah, oh, taking a deep breath. It's, yeah, like, I'm like, how did you, what did you imagine feminine flow to look like when you were coming into inner circle? Like, what was it that drew you to that altogether? I think I had spent so much time in the masculine mm -hmm. that I didn't even really know what the feminine was. Mm -hmm. So I really had to, like, I almost had to dig deep into it and research, like, okay, what are, I made a list of, like, feminine yeah. words <laughs> and like decided like which of those words do I want to embody yeah. Yeah. and um and then from that list I sort of created a vision yeah 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 okay so then you come into the inner circle and you're in your practice of your feminine flow and then something happens someone comes through the doors and you date him for a short while mm -hmm. and you see some of your anxious tendencies come through to the surface right this is like your first time dating in a really long time yeah you want to tell us a little bit about that experience and how you moved through that from my lens from from my lens it was like witnessing you move through that with so much devotion and grace like the devotion being almost the masculine energy of this is my intention and I'm here to fulfill it mm -hmm. is to like find this feminine flow <laughs> and also the grace the feminine energy of like forgiving yourself and relaxing and allowing it to just unfold without trying to control it too much tell us a little bit about that from your life yeah, if you can. yeah so I was reflecting a little bit on that this morning. And when that relationship first began, yeah. 
it felt so aligned. I was like, this is it. It's mm-hmm. like, it's matching my vision. Yeah. Um, it's feeling so like it was in that feminine flow. It was so relaxed. Like I would just show up and he'd have the date planned and ready. And, um, and it felt so aligned mm-hmm. until, until it didn't, until things yeah. sort of started to change. And, yeah. um, and in reflecting on that, actually, it was something that you had said that I had wrote down. And it was when I don't trust the masculine, I become it. Mm-hmm. And so that's where, you know, my anxious tendencies came in. Mm-hmm. And I moved from feminine into masculine mm-hmm. to try and control mm-hmm. and uh, overthink, overgive mm-hmm. over everything. Um, mm-hmm. And through being able to talk it all out (laughs) in the inner circle which I used that so much yeah um I was able to notice that like oh wait a second these are just tendencies yeah I need to scale it back a wee bit um and it, it took some time yeah but I was able to once I relaxed back into that feminine, I think yeah. I was able to see it from a different perspective yeah. uh, and notice that it, it wasn't aligned and it wasn't yeah. you know, the relationship I had hoped for. And what do you think that experience would have been like if you were dating him and really liked him at the time? And then this anxiety comes to the surface and you didn't have the support when that anxiety came through what do you think that would have been like (laughs) it would have been so much I mean I I would have so also in in coming into the inner circle it was important to me to stand in my worth Mm -hmm. and in my standards and in reflecting on that time I was no longer standing in my worth and I I no longer had my standards I shut those aside to try and, um, and make something of the relationship that wasn't there. And even now, when I look back, I'm like, wow, like I thought at the time that, you know, I was doing a really great job, but in that small moment that I was experiencing those anxious tendencies, um, I was not showing up the way I wanted to show up. And it's, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it would have just continued. Yeah. Agreed. It would have continued. And, and I mean, who knows what may have happened. My, my feeling is it would have also created a pattern that didn't need to stick. Yeah. Like a, yeah. And like a story and a, like a deeper conditioning and like, a, that would have taken you on a different trajectory. Yes. Yeah. And, and would have carried into the next relationship exactly. and the next relationship and the next relationship. Yeah. So yeah. actually we should just for anyone watching this, would you say being in your anxious tendency has been the tendency most of your life and your like relationship love life? Yes. Yeah. I would say so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of that overthinking, overdoing, overgiving, overperforming. Yes. Yeah. Lots yeah. of over. Yes. <laughs> I took some notes down. I'm like, well, what did I witness in you? Some of the things that I really witnessed in you, like the devotion and the grace, you also were radically willing to look at yourself. There was like a radical personal responsibility, a radical sovereignty that I saw you take on in a really empowering way, Mm -hmm. balanced with being kind to yourself and gracious with yourself as you learned this new dance and you learned these new steps and you would do this really beautiful, there was a delicate dance between like asking deep questions and very practical ones. Then you could take and try on and see what came out of that. And there was this, always this integrating and applying and this integrating and applying and actually taking the time to explore what your vision is for a relationship. And what I saw as a thread for you the whole way was, okay, she's getting stronger in her sense of internal safety. Mm. She's more and more anchored, 
with safety nets in her body. And one of the mantras we played with together was like, safe is the new sexy. Yeah. Then you also overlapped inner circle with men, money, manifestation. I think it's only fair to, to say that as well. And yeah. during that time, what okay. transpired? <laughs> well, there was a release first of the first relationship, which you yes. have let go of yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I spent time like really, um, reflecting on what had transpired, but also, um, having gratitude for what I learned from it. Yeah. Um, and I think that was really important too, was like being able to come away instead of like, oh, that didn't work out. It was, but I've learned all these things through yeah. that relationship. And yeah. so in learning those things, I came away as, you know, a, a, a different version of myself. Yeah. And so um, online dating was like a hard no for me. Like mm -hmm. I, there, I was not interested in any way. And I kept through the men, money manifestation. I was getting these, like, just try it, just try mm -hmm. it. Like just my own intuition was like, it, it's safe to try it. So, <clears throat> so normally my masculine would be like, well, it has to be perfect. So get your whole profile set up and then press yeah. go. Mm -hmm. But my feminine was like, just do it like put up the, the couple of pictures do the minimum and just do it and so I did I one evening I was like yeah okay I'm just gonna do it what mm -hmm. harm can come from it mm -hmm. and within 24 hours yeah, very fast <laughs> very fast um started like so yeah within 24 hours started chatting with somebody that evening he asked for a phone call um we have a two-hour phone call that evening um within maybe a few days um then we're out on a date yeah. and um the rest is history <laughs> yeah that, I mean it would but if, for any, like I know some people watching this this can be quite activating because they're like I've been online dating for years Right. And within 24 yeah. hours, but you came in with a really pristine clarity. Yeah. And I feel like the short relationship you had sharpened that like a laser. You were just so clear about what you were and were not available for. And I remember receiving those messages from you in the inner circle right after you met him or the, like the day you're meeting him. And it was just incredible to see how you were holding that with so much trust and there would be some little anxious tendency of like well am I supposed to call her am I supposed to say something or am I supposed to do something I haven't done and it was like can you allow your graciousness when you do hear from him when you do talk to him to be what you're giving like can you allow your energy to be what you're giving and you really focused in on that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. my energy I I would spend time like even before dates or even before our first phone call, I was like, okay, we're going to take some deep breaths. We're going to ground and align. And, um, and like, even before the dates, I'd have like this playlist. So I also made a playlist that matched my relationship vision. Yeah. And so I'd play that playlist just to get myself like into that energy and, and um, space. And yeah, so I think it, that definitely yeah. helped. Yeah. And how is that relationship unfolding now? Like, how does he align? What happens when your anxious tendencies come up? How do you both show up for it? Like, just tell us a little, give us a little snippets on this glorious relationship. Yeah. So, um, so it's, so I will mention that before he came in, I was playing around with that whole anxious tendencies and and you know will they always be there and and it was the Lenny and in inner circle that said you're going to meet someone and and you won't have those tendencies he won't bring those up in you and I thought yeah right like but that's it's in me so if those tendencies are in me then they're going to come out um and, and they eventually have a little bit 
um, but that in in such a different way. Yeah. Like I feel like that sense of safety um, was was just there yeah in some ways and and because I think I had it within myself um and then it was just mirrored back but when the I think I'm so aware of those anxious tendencies now that I can catch them right away Mm -hmm. and and I'm able to step into my feminine and lean back and Mm -hmm. trust Mm-hmm. Just is so and you also say things like you also let him in on I would like to know this or I'm feeling that or this is you know like you've also let him in on those pieces and been vulnerable and communicated some things you maybe previously would have thought you had to keep to yourself yes and that's a big stretch for me yeah that I have been working on too yes. is like speaking my truth um sharing my feelings yeah and yes and so far it's it's kept me feeling really safe yeah that's yeah. so beautiful yeah. what would you say is has been the biggest transformation for you in your time in the inner circle and like if you could paint a picture of what it what your love life was like and what it is now mm. Oh, wow. The transformation was like, just so huge. Mm-hmm. Like it, with it, it, just with, even just to say within those six months yeah. of inner circle, um, so expansive. Yeah. Um, but I also really dug deep yeah. into it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think working through my anxious tendencies and noticing them that that's been really important because I find it's, it's even through other relationships too, that I can see where that's coming up and I'm able to, um, soften Mm -hmm. a little, um, and just trusting myself. Yeah. Trusting the process. Um, And like relaxing into that safe and secure space. Yeah. Um, Also, another thing that is that detachment, which is feminine, right? But like thinking about, yeah, is there a purpose for doing this Mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. And am I doing this for a reaction or am I doing this because yeah, I want to share it? Yeah. And, and if it's because I want to share it, then the reaction doesn't matter or yeah. the outcome doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many takeaways, but those are my like yeah. ones that are coming to mind. Yeah. I mean, when I think about where you were when we did some one-on-one work together and you're still in your previous relationship and where you are now and what this relationship is like and what you are like inside of this relationship and the alignment you feel with this person and how safe you feel in your own self and then in this relationship because this relationship is just matching the level of trust you hold within yourself yeah it's really, really mind bending and mind blowing to feel like that much can shift and change and your whole outer world can look so different. Yeah. 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 It's reminding me of how you say like when your standards are here, people will meet you here. And I feel like that's so much of my growth and expansion has just allowed me to really like stand in my worth and my standards and it's yeah. it's truly amazing how how it just happens like when when you yeah. hold the pie someone comes yeah and can meet you there yeah and that 
journey of holding it that high, the process of holding it that high is a journey, right? Because your doubt, your fear wants to take you back down. And it's like the supernatural part of you that comes up and goes, I'm still going to hold it here. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. this is what I'm available for. Yeah. Yes. So good. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything you want to share about your time in the inner circle, which by the way, is going to be undergoing a name change in March. We will reveal that very soon. <laughs> Exciting. Um, Oh, I, so many things I could say. I would not be where I am today without <laughs> my time in the inner circle. Um, I, it's just such a gift. Um, and it has, what I've learned and experienced and grown through I mean I it's like priceless like I just I I don't need like I can't I don't even want to think about where I would be without it um and it it's my whole life it's not just it's not that it just manifested this relationship it's who I am it's mm -hmm you know, and, and that was a common thing too, is like who, who I be, who I be through this. Yeah. And it has just transformed who I be everywhere as a mother, as a daughter, as mm -hmm. a partner, as a co-parent, as all parts of my life. Mm -hmm. It, it has it just so much expansion yeah in in really such a short amount of time yeah yeah it's yeah and I every knowing there's not an ounce of doubt in my body that it actually it's it's anchored in you now yeah like it's deeply embedded and embodied in you now yeah <laughs> yeah I true I do I truly feel that yeah not like oh there it is or oh there's a glimpse yeah. -uh. it's like it is you mm -hmm. yeah and, and I've, I've forgotten about that part of the journey too where we were really sharpening your boundaries around your you know your past partnership and all of that just coming together and you know how you related to your parents in the context of you being a grown woman and you, there was so much that was explored. It was such a, I'm so, I'm so happy we still get to journey together inside of the portal and, you know, that being a place where we can just continue to nurture this way of being after your time in the inner circle and all that's transpired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that anyone watching this, like, you know, if you can relate to at all having anxious tendencies or avoidant tendencies, you know how stressful that experience can be when you're dating with that much anxiety. And when you're navigating relationships with that much anxiety, there is actually another way to feel. And it will completely change the outcome of who you attract in and what that relationship is like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I love you. Thank you for having me. If any of you have questions for Ashley or I, just feel free to tag us. Let me stop the live stream. <laughs>